Hi, I'm Shelby with Business Dynamics. Welcome to the Expertise Podcast, where I have put together an arrangement of people to be able to explore how their expertise has helped them transform their entrepreneurial journey so they can connect better with their clients. That's what we do in business. That's what we do at Business Dynamics with the Expertise Project. And when I thought of the first person that I should have featured on my podcast about the Expertise Project, I immediately thought of my friend John. John is a local business owner in Billings, Montana with myself. We met in the biz to biz group. We've also met in some other local networking groups and it's been really fun to get to know his story and fun to just see his business grow over the past few years that we have been involved with business together. I am an avid supporter of John's business. I get my seafood delivery bag from him every single month. You're going to hear a lot about that today in the podcast. And it's just been really fun to be a part of this journey together. So I wanted to feature John Wanderus and have him talk about his business a little bit. So I'll have and John introduce himself and then we'll get into some questions about more questions about his business. Cool. Yeah, well, first off, thank you. I, this is amazing being the first one on this podcast. And uh, yeah, I hope, you know, like my journey's up to this point and, uh, you know, the things we've done. Um, yeah, I just hope this can help, you know, other people along their journey too. Yeah, I, I, I know a little bit about your story, John, but I really want you to tell, tell us about who you are and why you started your business. Because I think that's such a critical piece. It's a critical piece for all business owners to be able to connect with their clients. And we definitely purchase brands before we purchase products or services. So connecting with your story and connecting with that, I think, is really important. So tell us about your story. Yeah. So, um, geez, it's been it's been a long journey so far. Um, you know, it, it really all started um, just with where I grew up. I mean, I'm, I'm from Alaska, um, you know, so that's where those roots with fishing come in. I, uh, I grew up in a tiny fishing town of Petersburg, Alaska, which is a true fishing community. I mean, it's a tiny island in Southeast Alaska. And, you know, so I, I grew up, number one, just totally admiring commercial fishermen. I mean, that yeah. was, that's everything around Petersburg, you know, was based around that. So, you know, I grew up commercial fishing. Um, you know, I've, I've had Montana roots. I uh, spent, you know, summers down here. Um, this is where my dad lives. So, um, you know, I spent a lot of time in Montana. I went to college here. And then after college, I went back up to Alaska and I was actually running seafood plants. So, you know, I've spent from when I was 15 is when I started working on fishing boats up until, gosh, 28 is uh, when I finally started this business. But uh, I've always had, you know, kind of that, that entrepreneurial sense, I guess. You know, even when I was running seafood plants, um, you know, I was always reading. I was always messing around with, you know, different business ideas. I had a lot of little side businesses that I've done over the years that have gone absolutely nowhere. Um, but, you know, all of that, along with all the experience I gained, you know, actually running seafood factories has just helped me get to here. You know, I mean, it's a combination of everything now um, that's going into this business. But, you know, I was always fascinated with the idea of connecting fishermen and just everything about Alaska and fishing and the story direct to consumers. Um, and that's where this whole idea, you know, for building seafood guys in the wild Alaskan seafood box really came up. And, you know, since we've started, we've obviously evolved, pivoted, changed so much. I mean, you start one place, you think it's going to be a home run and it is horrible. And then, you know, you change and you keep developing. So, that's kind of where we are now and just constantly evolving and uh, getting the word out. But I'm just so curious because fundamentally you, I mean, it was such an interesting connection that you had to develop that bridge between these local fishermen and between the Billings community yeah. and even a, na a national community now, cause you serve people from all over, all over the nation. So what, Talk about the importance between that local connection and why you think that we all need, I, I very much appreciate that local connection because the seafood is so delicious, but what's, why did you want to feature that as a part of your business model? 
Yeah, you know, so th this is the cool thing about, you know, being in year three now and looking back in this stuff, because when we started, I mean, we, we did. We started locally here in Billings, Montana, and we really started with, first off, just having a Facebook page, getting the word out, and, you know, I was doing deliveries with a cooler in the back of my truck, delivering seafood to people's homes. Um, then we actually got these seafood trailers, which kind of acted like food trucks, um, just with freezers in there. So we did like pop-up events, you know, locally here in Billings, and then eventually, you know, all over the state of Montana. So, you know, what we learned doing that was we were able to tell the story. So when customers came in, you know, it all started with, you know, just me at first, and I was able to tell them everything they could have even dreamed of knowing about this seafood plus some. So we were able to get into, you know, where's this seafood coming from? Who's catching it? Um, when was it caught? What are the seasons that you find this seafood? You know, how do you cook this seafood? How do you prepare this seafood? What, per, what um, goes well with the seafood? Um, you know, any questions that a consumer had? And with seafood, that's, that's one of the biggest things. You know, I mean, people are so timid around seafood, you know, is what I really found out when we got so involved with consumers. And so being able to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with customers was so big. And we, we did that for a year and a half, almost two years, to where, you know, we just had those personal interactions. So that was very valuable because, you know, when we pivoted and we went all online, e-commerce, you know, minus our local business, we had grown such a customer base because of that. I mean, we traveled, we were just counting them up um, actually this last week. And, you know, when we were doing this, we had traveled to over like 75 towns. Wow. So we were able to communicate and touch, you know, so many customers amongst all those towns. And, you know, that was through mainly Montana, Wyoming, a little bit of North Dakota, South Dakota. Um, so it was huge because when we started doing our shipping and all that stuff, we had, you know, a decent customer base, which again, when you can create that customer base, obviously you're, you're starting to build that brand, but then, you know, those people turn into repeat, you know, because of that experience, that's what was amazing because then that slowly kind of started snowballing. You know I mean? We got a lot of word of mouth out of that. People were big supporters during COVID when we switched, we shut the trailers down and we moved online. So, I mean, I just, I, I've always had a big connection knowing to where you can interact directly with the customer, um, you know, doing that on a local basis. And what we learned is now we're trying to figure out how we can do that on more of a national level. Um, so to still keep that local feel, which is so valuable because that's how you can connect with people. And now we're trying to, uh, you know, use all the digital stuff out there and do that same model, but on more of a national level. Now, a lot of people don't know this commonality between us, but there is a, an interesting commonality that we have and that we both studied in the same program at the University of Montana, which I think is interesting because we ended up in the same entrepreneurial circle, both graduated with a communication degree. So, uh, and I, that's the purpose of my consulting and my coaching is to talk about communication. So I'm interested in how you, you talked about how your businesses have business has pivoted drastically in the past nine months, as many people have. We've mo moved mostly online. We've had to create those relationships online or reestablish and establish those relationships online. Have you transitioned your messaging to your clients or have you, have you, ha do you have a different customer s communication strategy? What are some of the, some, what are some of the communication pieces and messaging pieces that have transitioned in your business? Yeah, so that's where we've been learning so much lately. And uh, I think that's so cool that we're going to talk about this because, you know, we, we had something that worked. I mean, we got to a point where this was clicking. I mean, it was, we were going to new towns. We were, you know, we were growing to new towns and we had a system. I mean, <laughs> excuse me, and it, it seriously, it was clicking to where, you know, what worked in one town, we started applying it to all these towns we were traveling to. And we're great. And so I'm thinking like, this is like, okay, here we go. We're going to make this change. And at first we just shut down the trailers and we really just started doing deliveries. So, you know, we totally advertised just the whole no contact, um, you know, free home delivery. So we were able to use the same message because um, it was, you know, we really marketed it at first as, hey, we're still coming to your town. We're not having the trailer. 
we're going to make it even more convenient for you. You don't have to come to us. We're just going to, you place your order and we're just going to drop this off right on your doorstep. And we're going to text you as soon as it's delivered and we're gone. And you've got amazing seafood, you know, in Sydney, Montana, Glasgow, Montana, Circle, Montana, um, Williston, North Dakota, you know, all these places. So that was great. And then we realized that this was not a sustainable thing. So we had people on the road, we had vans, we were buying freezers. It was, um, we had vans breaking down, we had huge automotive costs and it, it, it just wasn't working. So then we realized that the costs of shipping were almost identical. So we started shipping. When we started marketing a shipping service, it was a whole different ball game. And at first it was okay, you know, like within Montana, but as we started trying to really branch out um, throughout the US in all of the lower 48, you know, we realized we had to create a new brand. So Billing Seafood Guys, it just, it, it, it wasn't fitting, you know, our messaging, you know, a lot of people were confused um, because, you know, that is tied to Billings, Montana. It's much more local and regional. So we created the wildalaskanseafoodbox.com. And, you know, at first we really started trying to do <laughs> the exact, exact same stuff that we'd been doing. And it wasn't working. I mean, we were running our Facebook ads and we were constantly just going for the sale or for the sale. And so we realized really quick, we were wasting so much advertising costs because we were doing these Facebook ads, which we used to do, you know, when we were going to these small towns and it worked in these small towns because they were small and they didn't have something like this. So it was a big deal that, you know, we were coming and then they got into that kind of routine. We were there once a month. But when we're trying to, you know, advertise to people who have no idea who we are, all of a sudden we just pop up on their Facebook feed or in their email box, um, their inbox. It didn't work. And it, it took about two months to really realize like this was not going anywhere. So we, we did, we, we changed the messaging a lot. You know, we started working with influencers, but what we really came down to is we just, we totally switched the whole idea of like, okay, we're done just trying to sell people. We want to introduce ourselves. And we started thinking, you know, how can we solve customers' problems? So these people might be in Ohio, Virginia, Indiana, anywhere now in the lower 48. So what are their problems when it comes to seafood? And we started writing a lot of that stuff out. And so we really switched our messaging around there, um, or around that. We started building a lot of, uh, you know, free content, um, more cooking videos, a lot of guides that we'd give people, you know, to get leads and email addresses. And then we started working with a lot of influencers um, and doing podcasts. So whenever we were able to tell our story um, and connect, you know, our connection with the fishermen in Alaska, you know, that, that was always the, the win. So, but messaging changed dramatically. Always the win, the connection to the story. People want to be connected to that. And I feel that with, with your product, there's such a unique, there's such a fun story there. This is, you fly in this seafood directly from Alaska that's packaged. And then, then I think the challenge is that you've got to differentiate your service from why, why should I buy from the wild Alaskan seafood box rather than go to the grocery store. And that's, I think, a challenge of your business too. Can you talk about how you differentiate yourself a little bit? Yeah. So, I mean, again, and that's, that's still right where we are because, you know, if, if you Google online right now and, uh, you know, you just look up wild Alaskan seafood or seafood delivered to me, there is a ton of other businesses. So, you know, yes, this service you know, we're, we're on a national level now, but we have a lot of people, other businesses out there who are spending a lot of money to go after the same, you know, potential customers we are. So we've constantly been changing too. Um, you know, we're working on a rebrand, but one of the things we really focused on is our connection to the fishermen. Um, you know, and in the Wild Alaskan Seafood Box, it is, you know, it's, it's quite a bit different than building seafood guys because the seafood we have in these boxes, you know, they're actually, you know, connected directly to a lot of different, you know, individual fishermen or co-ops. So that's where we really tried to kind of individualize ourselves. But at the same time, what I realized is that as soon as I could start working with, you know, my friends who are still fishing up there year round, 
I, and, and, you know, get fish directly from them and work out all these, you know, uh, really these logistical headaches to where we buy the fish directly from them. They bring them in to a small mom and pop processor. They get them processed, all packaged up and then shipped down to us. I had so much more fun marketing that. Oh, yeah. And that's where I got excited because not, you know, it was blowing my mind. We were able to pay these guys more for their catch than they were getting at, you know, the bigger cannery so you know whenever we can do stuff like that and I just I learned a lot more about myself you know when I love being able to help and kind of market other people too and so it was just so much easier and more enjoyable for me to be able to connect to those guys tell the story tell about what they do you know these are third generation fishermen they're out on the boats you know five to six months out of the year on and off Um, you know how that catch works doing, you know, social media content, you know, around those guys, um, doing interviews with them. So, you know, that that's where we're trying to individualize ourselves to and set ourselves apart. But it's so much easier, you know, for myself and our team to market that because sure. we, we believe in it. We're I mean, it's just we get excited. You know, that's kind of where that passion lays. Well, and it's such a win win for everybody. It's mm-hmm. Like it's a win for your customers and it's a win for you to to be able to provide that local flavor and that local product to the the community that's not even close to them. So I think that's a, I think that's a really neat thing. And it makes marketing more fun because you're telling stories because that's really what it's all about is finding the right messages to connect with the right audience. And I think that's awesome. So I think that what also I really think that you've taken advantage of is the box. So, so let's pivot and talk a little bit about your membership. So today is my today is my favorite day of the month because uh, I get my seafood box on this day, and this is delivered to my front porch, and I don't have to go to the store. It's contactless delivery, and I get all this delicious seafood that probably covers at least three or four meals in my house. I don't, my kids eat a lot, so three or four meals, but I get salmon. And uh, this is just one option, but I've had this membership for six or seven months now. Yeah, for a easily. While. My, uh, easily. Probably a year. Yeah. <laughs> I, again, <laughs> great supporter. I get some nice rockfish, all frozen and packaged. And I'm a huge fan of this. We get some crab, which is a great addition. It's hard to find really good seafood in Montana, and it's just nice to have that connection. And then I get some scallops. So, Every month I get this membership box, and I know there are multiple different kinds of membership boxes that you get. You can put them together based on what you like and what you want. So, John, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So, um, so Shelby's box right here. This is this is where it all started. So, this is our first. This was our first shot, and you know, a subscription service. So, this was our local, you know, Billings, Montana subscription service. So, you know, we we've actually. It's crazy. So we've actually, we, we phased the Billing Seafood guys one out. So, you know, what Shelby has here is a total grandfathered service. And now everything is through the wildalaskanseafoodbox.com. And, you know, really how this membership works is, you know, now through the wildalaskanseafoodbox.com, we have created three curated boxes. So we've got three boxes that is just Wild Alaskan Seafood. So there's... Do you want to show them online? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Get your website up and we can show show the audience where your where this is at. Okay, so I think we're good to okay. So here it is right here. So this this is the wildalaskanseafoodbox.com. And you know, this is really focusing on our membership. And this is where, you know, when we pivoted to online and really everything being e-commerce now besides our local business. We had no idea what we were doing with a <laughs> with managing a subscription box, and I have learned so much and still learning. But so we got our basic stuff with these websites. I want to show people how it works. Have some nice graphics in there, and then we go right down to our options. So the the big thing around the Wild Alaskan Seafood Box is that we have three curated boxes. So inside these curated boxes, you know, you're going to be receiving five pounds of seafood. You know, roughly 13 servings. But the three curated boxes, the salmon, the white fish, and the red and white, this is Alaskan seafood only. So this is like these three boxes are the cream of the crop. 
And then what we found out really quick, a couple months into it, is that there's a lot of people that want to build their own. And, you know, we just had fish in these boxes. And don't get me wrong, like it worked. We were getting, we were getting members. It was great. But, you know, we also have one-time orders up here. And people saw that, you know, we had crab, we had shrimp, we had scallops, we had all this other stuff. And so they're like, hey, I really want to add this into our membership. So we did, you know, a build your own box option too. Nice. So, yeah, so that's, that's where we are right now. And we're constantly figuring out, you know, how, how to be an e-commerce brand, how to, you know, our presence online. Because switching online, I mean, this is no more showing up to a town with a trailer doing pop-up events. Right. I mean, this is like, you know, your, your conversions, your acquisition costs, your lifetime value, um, the optimi- optimization of a website. I mean, it is, it's all about numbers and it's a, it's a whole different ball game. And we're, we're just like in the beginning phases of really figuring this one out. So that leads, that leads me, it, I think it's great to see that and to see that there are some options. I, again, it's something that I take advantage of every month and I really enjoy it. So I encourage other people to do the same. One of the questions I, wa- I ask entrepreneurs are, I mean, clearly the pandemic and the transition that we've had to do in our businesses have been a challenge in this past couple of months. Year, we're at a year point now. Can you, can you talk about one of the biggest challenges and something that you've learned from that in that experience that's taught you, taught you more about business? Yeah, no, oh, definitely. I mean, I think the number one thing it taught me was, uh, you know, just don't stop. I mean, just constantly just keep moving. You know, when things seem horrible and bad, I mean, they, I kind of looked at it to where they have to get better, but uh, we just never stopped. And it was, it was kind of, it was really interesting looking back in a lot of this too, because what COVID and the pandemic did for us, you know, was it sped up our process to where, you know, we already had this game plan. You know, we wanted to go online. This was, this was really in, in our brain. Like we wanted to do this, but we had a good thing going. Things were working, things were clicking, we were growing, there was revenue coming in, like things were, you know, like it was actually working. So looking back on it now, like we really did get comfortable, you know, and so what I believe would have took, you know, probably two years, uh, we did in like three months. And so, you know, we had it outlined, we were slowly already beginning the process, and then we just really just poured gasoline on it and just, you know, throttled down and just went online. so, you know, in a way, I'm thankful that, you know, we, we already had that vision, but, you know, really what the pandemic did is it just, it really lit that fire underneath us because we were seeing it. We were seeing these trailer events, you know, we were getting negative feedback going into some of these communities because, you know, we were coming from the bigger city yeah. in Montana and, uh, you know, where there were more cases. Um, so it, it was, you know, we saw the writing on the wall and uh, we did it really quick, but, you know, uh, another big thing and really some of the some good advice that I would have to entrepreneurs is you got to commit you know I mean we didn't go just like halfway in on this website stuff and shutting the trailers down we seriously shut them down like we shut them down we sold them <laughs> and we just went so that really forced us into this new wave and um, it's much more scalable for us and Absolutely. you know like I said it was probably two years away and you know we we just we got after it no, that's great. There's a, it, I think for many businesses, it sped up a lot of processes that we, we had to go online. My business isn't similar, right? There's not a lot of face-to-face happening anymore, or the face-to-face is happening over Zoom calls rather than anything else. So I think that's a, it just forced us into that and the being able to adapt to that helped that expand. So one last question. I just, I'm just curious on your, pa- on the past 10 months where have you where has your business been in the past 10 months yeah you mean so just where have we gone yeah yeah so i mean really from the sale of the seafood trailers to the all online where are you at now okay so where do you want to be yeah so you know where we are now is at the end of the summer um you know we we shut we even shut down our deliveries going to these towns so i'd say by july July and August, we'd cut everything off and we went fully online, you know, minus our local business. So we had two months, the tail end of August, all of September and a decent chunk of October to where we went like this. And we were making that transition. Mm -hmm. 
And I was, I won't cuss on here, but I was terrified, <laughs> you know, because I mean, I knew it was going to happen and I, I did accept it. I told myself that, you know, this, this is, we're going to see a big, a big dip. Um, I believe in it, but it was a big dip and it, it hurt. And, uh, you know, thankfully, yeah, we, we did have some of the support with some of the packages, but we, we kept pushing forward and now we've made up for it. So, you know, our, you know, our wild Alaskan seafood box is contributing for over half of our revenue within our business now. And that really happened in, you know, really a three, four month period to create that. So that was, that was big. And so, you know, we're, we're right back there. We're creating a little bit more than what we were before. Um, so, you know, I guess really where we want to go, you know, now is just, uh, keep growing our memberships. Um, but we also want to put even more of an emphasis on working directly with fishermen and connecting consumers, you know, with the fishermen up in Alaska. Um, you know, I, we just, we just finished, um, kind of sealing a deal with a co-op out of Pelican, Alaska. It's a small, small processor and there's about 20 fishermen that they support. So this is all 20 small boat fishermen out of a tiny village in Alaska that we're going to start working with exclusively, you know, for our boxes. So we got stuff like that going on. We've also realized that, you know, some of the services or just some of the things we do um, are very unique. Um, and what that is, is shipping frozen seafood on a national basis. So we're actually starting to fulfill orders for other businesses now. And that's kind of opened up a whole nother market for us. So there's a lot of ranchers in Montana that are, you know, really proce custom processing their own beef, their own products. So we're actually shipping, you know, for those guys now. And we're shipping for other few other seafood companies so we're hoping to grow that a little bit more um, but just continue on this membership and uh, you know I mean growing that customer base more of a national level sounds like a good place to end it so what what can what can the community do to help your business you know I think honestly the biggest thing is um, you know just check us out you know um, really look in our content um, I think a lot of our stuff if you guys are into seafood is you know follow us on social media check out our youtube channel it's full of cooking videos q a stuff we teach you and show you you know everything you need to know to cook seafood at home and you know i mean follow us there you know sp spread the word by letting other people know about know about us um but I, I think you know try to find the value that we can bring to you um and then also just communicate with us you know i mean check us out on all our social media areas and you know let us know what we can do better my favorite thing recently as we conclude this interview has been the 45 dollar bag of seafood special that john has and i went to pick it up last week and uh john is keeping track of how many i've purchased <laughs> and i've purchased at least seven out of the last ten and it's just a great deal it's just really fun to support so I really appreciate having you on for the first podcast of the Expertise Podcast. It's great to hear about the connections between you and not only the local community of Billings, but you and the local fisherman community of Alaska. I think it's a tremendous, not necessarily a cause, but I think it's a great bridge that you've made with your business. And I think it's really fun to explore that. So John, thank you for being the first guest on the expertise podcast and i look forward to working with you again yes, and continuing to support your business definitely with my seafood purchases we appreciate so, everything yeah thank you everybody we'll see you the next podcast to explore more about how your expertise can create connections with your audience